Hello friends, this is Carrie and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today, friends, I went a little nuts. I chose seven stories out of the Stolen Seat subreddit. I hope you guys like them. Let's begin. Our first post is by 1001 Tea Leaves. Able-bodied men occupy priority seats as I stand with a cane. Badass grandma puts them to shame. Another story regarding priority slash disabled seats on public transportation with a little extra international spin. When I was in college, I spent a semester studying abroad in Japan and to make a long story short, I injured my knee quite badly in a skiing accident one weekend. If any of you have ever been to Tokyo, you will understand how hectic and crowded the trains can be. For the three weeks that I was on crutches, I avoided the subway completely. But once I could put a decent amount of weight on my leg, I switched to a cane and was able to get around somewhat normally. The one thing I couldn't do, however, was stand for an extended time on a moving train. The strain on my knee required to keep my balance coupled with the vibration of the train aggravated the injury and caused a significant amount of pain. Most of the time, that famous Japanese hospitality rang true and the second I stepped onto the train, if there was anybody in priority seats, they immediately noticed the cane and stood up to offer me their seats. It didn't matter that I was younger and a foreigner, the cane was the immediate signal that I needed to sit down. One day, however, this was not the case. The train was fairly packed and all the seats were filled. With two youngish businessmen sitting in reserved seats, one looking at his phone and the other one reading a book. Of course, it's not really acceptable in Japan to make a scene in public, so I took a deep breath and decided to just suck it up and move to stand directly in front of the reserved seats, desperately hoping that one of the two men would notice the cane. It wasn't long before my knee started to really hurt, but I stood fast, putting more and more weight on my cane and my good leg while holding myself up as much as possible with my free hand, clutching the overhead handle. I tried making subtle gestures and quietly paying sounds to indicate that I was having trouble standing, but still neither of them looked up. I had all but resigned myself to a miserable commute when a sweet old lady, who clearly should have been offered the seats as well, got on the train. I sidestepped to make room for her and we stood next to each other in silence. By this point, I was fighting back tears because of the frustration and physical pain. A couple of minutes later, she turns to me and asks me if I'm okay. I indicate my pain and say in broken Japanese, my leg hurts. That's all it took, and she jumped into action, yelling to get the attention of the two men. Once they finally looked up, she tore into them, ranting about how inconsiderate they were, how I was obviously in pain. I only caught bits and pieces of her lecture, but she was clearly berating and shaming them in a way that only an angry grandma can. I think she even included something about being a foreigner and they were giving Japan a bad name. They stood up and bowed their heads in guilt, apologizing profusely as the whole train began to take notice of what was happening. The woman made sure I sat down in one of the seats, then she took a seat right next to me. They both left the train very quickly at the next stop, though I'm pretty sure it it wasn't where they had planned to get off. I thanked the woman repeatedly and the two of us spent the rest of the ride chatting pleasantly. I don't know about you guys, but this one really warmed my heart. Kudos to the grandma for shaming those two jerks into actually acting like decent people. Anyway, our next story is by the blue guy. Stolen seat on an airplane. In a previous job, I used to travel for work a lot. Often I'd go into work only to be told I was needed in another state that day, so I'd have a car waiting for me to take me to the airport, and then I'd normally fly first class to my destination. The main reason I'd fly first is so I'd have the space to work or sleep, depending on the time. Anyway, this happened, so I grabbed my travel bag, which I kept in my desk and had my phone charger, my noise canceling headphones and my passport. And I jumped into the car to the airport. One of the big advantages of flying first is lounge access. So I always made a priority to go to the lounge, grab a muffin and a coffee. I downed the coffee as fast as I could and then head to the plane with the muffin. It just so happened that today's flight was on a 38 seater prop job, but because of the status I have with the airline, thanks to all the travel and first class tickets, I was in row one. This plane was a 2-2 seating formation, with the first two rows being first class. I get on the plane, and as I'm boarding, I see someone sitting in my seat. Mind you, the plane boards right next to the first row. 
I give the flight attendant my boarding pass and she sees 1A and says, your seat is right as she spins around 180 degrees and sees the passenger in my seat over the barrier that's there. She turns to the passenger and says, you're in the wrong seat. The passenger responds with, make him sit in the second row. This turns into a full on argument with the flight attendant winning. The seat stealer gets up and just to be spiteful, knocks the muffin out of my hand. This was too much for the flight attendant who ordered the passenger off the flight. They didn't have any checked baggage, so they grabbed their carry-on and left. The thing was, there was only one direct flight to where I was going that day. The only other way to get there was to transit through the city and pay quite a bit of money. So that's what I guess happened. The flight attendant was really apologetic about it. I told her not to worry, and when I flew again in the future, she always hooked me up with extra stuff. One day she found out I had a newborn, and so she gave me a stuffed mascot of the airline. Our next story is by Georgia Swift. That's okay, I speak Portuguese. I just found this sub and immediately thought of my flight from Brazil to the UK. I always book window seats when I travel and I paid a fair amount extra to book a window seat in advance, seeing as it was a long distance trip. When I got on the plane, there was a man sitting in my seat and his girlfriend was sitting next to him. I politely informed them that this is my seat and I had paid extra for it. The woman said to her partner in Portuguese, pretend you don't speak English and eventually she'll find a new seat. I'm not giving it up for a child. It should be noted that I am not a child, although I look young for my age. What they clearly didn't realize was that I have a bachelor's degree in Spanish and Portuguese, so I understood perfectly. I respond in Portuguese with, I'm not a child, I'm an adult who paid specifically for this seat. Please move or I'll have to speak to the flight attendant. Without saying another word, the pair stood up and moved to their seats, several rows away, and both of their seats were neither window nor aisle. I hope they enjoy their 12 hour flight. Our next story is by Melinda Allison. Oh, your husband is sitting where my things have been for two hours because I got up for less than five minutes. I'm currently on a flight from Dulles to Denver. My plane started in Atlanta and we had a very brief layover in Dulles. We weren't able to even get off the plane because we began boarding the people getting on here so quickly. The airline does not assign seats. You're given a boarding number and it's open seating when you get on in the order of the boarding number. I went to pee while no one was in my row. My purple book bag was under my seat as much as it will go, but was still sticking out a good bit. Gold headphones hanging from my seat pocket, a bright green Starbucks tumbler in the seat. I come back to find a newly boarded lady sitting in the aisle seat of my row. Me. I motion to the window that's me. Lady. Oh no, my husband is sitting there. There's at least 100 plus seats left open as the plane holds 175 people and only 33 of us stayed on from Atlanta and only maybe 15 to 20 new ones have gotten on. Some were even full rows. Me. Sorry, I just went to the restroom after we landed. I was on the connecting flight, lady. Well, my husband needs that seat. Can you move your things? Me. Uh, no, sorry, I can't. There are tons of open seats you can move for one of those, lady. But I didn't see your things and I'm already here, me. Well, I'm sitting in my seat, so if he wants to sit in the middle, he can or you can both move. I literally squeeze by her and sit. Lady. Well, now I have to move. Me. Puts my headphones on. Good for OP for sticking by her guns and not moving for this witch. I mean, if this woman was so blind that she couldn't see this stuff to begin with, then she deserves to have to move somewhere else. If you've been watching until here and are enjoying my content, please put some heart emojis in the comment section down below. Our next story is by Kristen2k35. So someone was sitting in my seat. This happened a few years back and I still cringe. My partner and I were at the cinema. I don't recall the movie, but I think it was written. I always book my seats online and print them off when I arrive at the cinema. It saves time, effort, and energy, and you can get the seats you want. My partner has Crohn's disease and often prefers the aisle seat so that she can go to the toilet if need be. This cinema where we were at had a section of two seats separated by an aisle going back all the way to the cinema. Perfect for the two of us. So I booked these seats and fairly close to the front, but still up the steps. Fast forward, we arrive, check in, get snacks and head to the screen. We see some people around about where we thought our seats were, but I double and triple checked and sure enough, they were in our seats. Someone's in your seats, you can either sit somewhere else or politely ask them to move and point out their mistake. I'm the politely ask kind of person. I say to this woman and her companion, excuse me, I'm very sorry, but I think you're in our seats. We got, we've got seats 
seat number, and seat number. So the woman gets up out of the seat in a weird way, but I kind of turn around and look around at the cinema so not to make them feel even more awkward. As I turn back around and slightly check on the status of the seat change, the woman is on the floor shuffling down the steps on her butt. She has no legs. She's a double amputee. Her wheelchair is at the bottom of the steps. I wanted to crawl up my own butt and die of embarrassment. Our next story is by Hell JWM 18925 First Class Tantrum. So I was on a flight from MSP to LAX and while I was with my mother who could barely walk because she had a bad hip at the time, we got onto the plane which was packed. Delta had to bring out the 767 for this and since my mom was a frequent flyer and she needed extra time, we boarded early. We were getting settled in and finally the last group got on board. Right before leaving the gate, some woman decided that our seats were hers. She demanded that we give up our seats for her four-year-old kid. I got up to get the flight attendant, but then the lady decided that it was her turn to sit down. But once we got the flight attendant, she refused to leave and ended up being escorted off the plane by the police. It was an uneventful flight otherwise. Lesson of the story? Don't claim others' seats are yours and sit in them when they leave to get help. Our final story is posted by vpros42. Recovering stolen train seats with an extra tasty finale. I frequently travel from my home city to another city an hour away for work and always book seats on a train. Partly so I can get some work done, mainly because this route can get pretty busy and UK trains are crappy and frequently cancelled, meaning you get two train loads of people on one train. This is one such occasion. This train was packed full. Sitting and standing, I managed to weave my way to my seat and find a grubby old guy with high-vis clothing sat in my seat. I did the typical English thing of saying, I'm terribly sorry, but I think you might be in my seat. The response is instant attitude and swear words, some looks from other punters. I don't know what punters are. Often I will let it slide and sit elsewhere, but there was literally no chance on this sardine can, and he put my back up with his response. I made my case more strongly, and he demanded to see my reservation. I held it out, and he reached to grab it, which gave me an enjoyable chance to whip it out of the way and say, look with your eyes and not with your hands. With a lot of grumbling, he slowly gathered his crap and got out of the way, and I sat down. A couple of minutes later, a heavily pregnant woman in clear discomfort made her way down the train. I was surprised no one had given up their seats for her, so I offered her mine. Her gratitude was nice, but better. Standing for the rest of the journey with this grumbly twat glaring at me for getting him out of a seat he had stolen and I wasn't even using. That's all the stories I have for today. Links to the original Reddit post will be in the description box below. If you enjoy my content, please comment, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.